find the city, there's nothing on my sheet here that says that we're going to have any fun at all. So, you're forewarned. Despite that, I'll say, I don't care if it's fun as long as it's interesting. Yeah? And that uh, usually when we get a government, somebody from major government in here on the run sheet over in the liner notes for us, it says no obvious yawning. I don't think that's going to be a risk here today. I'd like all of you to join me in welcoming back to the light side with a big venture cup, our next speaker, the Minister of Higher Education and Science, Tommy Epps. Welcome back, Tommy. We are here. <laughs> Did, did you do that for everyone today? <laughs> oh, for me? I, I prefer to, uh, I choose to believe the last. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so, <coughs> so it, it's great to be back and thanks for inviting me to, to speak here today. Um, being here uh, right now, 50 days into my period, as we say, uh, feels like, you know, it's the perfect combo of, you know, my former background and my current role of being, you know, an entrepreneur at, at heart, now turned politician, but having the responsibility for higher education and science, because that's exactly what you guys are celebrating here today. So it's great to be uh, to be back among friends. I've made a lot of new friends in Parliament and in my ministry, but it doesn't yet feel exactly like home. This feels like home. So great to uh, great to be here. Um, I, you know, I don't know uh, who will be the winner yet. I just got the update of who won each of the uh, of the five uh, of the five categories. If you could, uh, <laughs> uh, I just got you know who won the five categories, but I don't know who, who the final winner is. But it's clear there's there's one uh, winner here today, and that is the uh, you know the, the the investment in knowledge, because. When, when I saw, you know, and, and nothing bad about all the uh, startups that I've seen on, on, on Dragon's Den, but there's a tendency uh, with that focus on that part of entrepreneurship is that it becomes a bit, uh, that does celebrate the in-depth uh, knowledge and the science that many great startups in Denmark have also been built on. But that's what, what you guys are, are, are here for. And I all, we all know the myth about the, uh, the dropout entrepreneur. That's actually the, the, the most you know, common myth about an, an entrepreneur is someone that, that, you know, the high risk nature of this guy or this girl simply did not fit university, right? Reading the same stuff as everyone else, going to the same exams as everyone else, right? No, 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 that's not for me. And I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. No rules apply for me. I don't read any books. I just go and do stuff, right? And then one day in my garage, I invent a brilliant thing and I become a billionaire, a bit like Steve Jobs, a bit like Bill Gates. That's the, that's the myth a lot of people choose to believe around entrepreneurship. But, uh, but that's, not, uh, that's not true. You know, our research in the ministry, and also the research from, that I know from earlier from the uh, uh, Fund for Entrepreneurship, clearly shows that there's a good, uh, strong correlation between having invested a lot of years in, in universities, in science, and then becoming an, uh, becoming an entrepreneur that it simply does pay off to build your, your startup on in-depth knowledge. These startups built by uh, people that graduate from university, they do better if you just look at one simple factor, sales three years after they started. So the, the facts uh, also show that it does pay off. And I don't want to neglect that there's a lot of people that do not go to university and they go and build great startups. But the myth about that in order to become a great entrepreneur, better drop out of uh, college, better drop out of university. Let's kill that one. Because that's simply not true. There some, there's a lot of you and people out there in the world, in Denmark and abroad, that will do brilliant by getting a university degree, maybe go straight out from university and build a startup, or maybe go out there and get a long career, and then in the mid-30s, when they turn 40, they have ex the exact amount of knowledge that enables them to build a great uh, start to put, build a great company. So, to you guys, you invest in your education, you go and I hope you plan to graduate and then go and build a, build your dream or you choose to do it in, in, in combination. One, one great example of this is uh, Universal Robot. 
Um, I, I spoke to one from SDU just before here that, that was a bit sad that there wasn't that many from SDU represented here uh, today. And I was like, yes, but there's Universal Robot, right? One of the most clear examples of building a great company that comes out from, the, from science, from, from the university. When the three guys there sat down and said, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't make sense that a robot has to be that expensive. So they're only there for the big companies out there. Let's build something more simple, something more affordable for small and medium-sized businesses. So robots, automation can become a part of, 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 of smaller companies. And that's what they did. And today, you all know the story, right? They are in, around the world, and based on their success, and other great success with Mir has been built, and a whole robotic cluster has been built around the uh, SDU and the, uh, and, and the UNC area. So that's the, you know, the example that should also inspire you to, to both be, you know, study universities, uh, go in depth, but also go and believe that you, can, you, you will have a career as, as an intern uh, after. Um, that's what I did when a lot of you know young uh, students come to me and ask. They don't do that much anymore. They don't. It's like now being a minister. My advice doesn't pay off the same way. <laughs> but, but but before when I was at Dra Dragonstein, then when I was out giving speeches, quite a few uh, students would uh, come up afterwards and say, "I have this. Uh, you know, I want to become an intern. Should I drop out? Should I drop out of college or out of universities?" And it's like. You know, being a, an introvert is not a career in itself, it's what you want to achieve with it. So that was also my answer to these, uh, to these uh, students. If you really have something that you're sure, you're so certain that you need to do it right now, and the world needs it right now, if you don't do it right now, the world will not become a better place. Then go and do it. Then it's completely fine to drop out and follow that, that path. But if, you, but, but, if you, but if it's just because you want to be an introvert, then wait, finish, graduate, Go out, get the experience, and then wait because one day you then have that calling to go and build something, and then you do it. The, uh, you know, I also want to, to thank what the Danish University is actually doing in this uh, in this field. I've witnessed it before and, 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 and here today as well in terms of uh, of, of fostering the entrepreneur uh, entrepreneur in mind. The uh, that that you actually go out and start thinking about that what you do at universities one day could become an idea that turns into a product that turns into a company. Universities do that through their entrepreneurship programs, through mentorship, and through the incubators. And it does pay off. If we look at how these things have developed since earlier, you know, since 2001, 2002, until today, we have 50% more entrepreneurs coming out of universities uh, today than we had, uh, had before. If you look at just the difference between 2015 and today, now, you know, 25% more students, they actually experience entrepreneurship as part of their curriculum at Danish universities. So, a lot of things has happened, and it also shows uh, in, in the numbers in terms of what, what uh, the result of it. So, to Danish universities, who are also represent here today, thank you for all your, uh, your efforts, and also talking about this and giving students, teachers, researchers, scientists, and, and, and opportunity to also explore this part of the world. My ambitions go further than just talk about entrepreneurship. I have an ambition about making the Danish education system more flexible. More flexible so it, it, it fosters the interchange between that you study and uh, real life, business life. And one part of that real life and that business life, that's entrepreneurship. So um, we, have, we have a couple of things in, in, in the making. One thing is the, uh, the right for the, uh, to get a master after you graduate as a bachelor. I want to extend that so you can go out and pursue a career, go out and ha have a job after bachelor graduation, and then have a guarantee to come back and study a master. So there's a number of things that I want to do to make the education system more flexible. And hopefully that will also achieve something for you guys in terms of entrepreneurship and experience that. So after this, uh, the summer vacation, I'll put forward a political proposal that I hope that I can get for the first time count to 90 and get, uh, or hopefully more, and I can get support for to put into, into law so you soon can experience an education system that is more flexible. We also need to rethink a bit how we, we operate from a government perspective, how we operate with, with, these, uh, with the innovation environments out of universities. 
I want to make it much clearer for you guys on what kind of support you can get from, from the government in terms of advice, but also in terms of, uh, of uh, financial support. So we are working on that uh, this fall. It has been agreed between uh, other parties as part of the uh, uh, simplification of the Danish uh, of the Danish business. Uh, if I was trying to someone help me with that translation <laughs> from the Danish uh, business support. <laughs> that sounds right, wrong. Business support <coughs> system. And so we want to make make that part of the business support system around the innovation environments out of universities much more. Uh, much simpler, so you have one one place to go in order to get advice and, and financial uh, support. So wait and see, it will be much better. I promise. So uh, at the end here, I just want to to thank the uh, the venture Cup for inspiring uh, Danish students. You have been doing that for many years. I've been inspired by what you guys have done, and I'm still doing. So thanks for that. I also want to thank all the participants. Um, you know that you go out and, and, and invest so much and, and, and come here and really have this desire uh, to win, right? Yes. <laughs> but everyone is like, I don't know whether that's because I'm a minister now. Before when I was, you know, there was a bit more like, you know, a bit more response. And I was like, you think that everything I say now is law? I still have to come to 90 because before that's uh, that's the case, right? Um, but, but, but I think my most important message here today is remember, and I'm sure you are aware, there's no opposition between becoming smarter, studying at university, and then going uh, for a startup career. There's no opposition between the two, and that's the most important thing that we are, in, in my view, are celebrating here today. So uh, good luck to all of you. Soon I'll actually be announcing uh, the winner. Thanks for listening.